Hi, I'm Richard Griscom, and this is a video presentation of the Digital Notebook Method, which is a method for the rapid processing of elicited linguistic data. This is a project I've been working on with my colleague, Manuel Otero. And in this presentation, I will briefly be covering the main stages of the method. If you'd like to learn more about the finer details, please visit the Digital Notebook Method wiki page, which is hosted on GitHub. All right, so new initiatives like the Force 11 Joint Declaration of Data Citation Principles and the Austin Principles, they stipulate that we need to do better to make our data citable and accessible. This is primarily because reproducible scholarship is valued higher than unreproducible scholarship. For those who are interested in language documentation too, data accessibility and citation also supports uh, efforts to create repositories of language data that are persistent and accessible to a wide variety of different users, including members of speaker communities and others working outside the discipline of linguistics. When we try to utilize traditional data and metadata collection methods, though, we oftentimes run into bottlenecks that prevent us from making our data citable and accessible. So here you can see a PDF rendition of a, a page from my field methods notebook. And the notes in this notebook, they aren't citable or accessible. You can't search for a word in my notes and you wouldn't easily be able to listen to a recording of any of these words either. So when we focus on the written form as our primary data, we run into these bottlenecks. Here's a recording of an elicitation session from my first year of field work in Tanzania. During this session, my goal was to collect a small number of words in the SMJ Datoga language. In this section, I was listing the word mushk, which means skins in the plural. And I was focusing so much on writing down the word that I wasn't really thinking about the recording that I was making. And if we look in, in detail at what I did actually end up creating, it was a recording of a complex multilingual dialogue between myself and the speaker that I was working with. And the target words in this recording are technically citable and accessible, but uh, because of the mixture of different kinds of data in the recording, it took me more time to make the data citable and accessible than it took me to make the data in the first place. So what I'm going to show you today is a method for creating and processing elicited data that makes it uh, data citation and accessibility possible within less than half an hour after its original creation. So our goal in this method is to create something like what we see here. So uh, each elicited item has a unique internal reference ID, which together with a persistent identifier, that will allow you to cite uh, each elicited item in publications and other materials. And the text data is also time aligned and searchable, which means that anyone can easily find the particular section of recording that you have cited. So this method is called the digital notebook method. It provides nearly instant access to time aligned elicited data and it scales up for large data sets, and it produces archive-ready and citable documentation in three useful formats. In order to do these things, uh, there are some requirements, however. First is that you have to be working with a trained speaker who can consistently produce prompted elicited language, ideally with repetitions. Uh, you also need some basic recording equipment, like an audio recorder and a headset microphone. Uh, you also need a computer and some basic software like IPA input software if you're doing IPA transcriptions and a data merger program which is available on the digital notebook method wiki. So how does this method work? Well there are three main ways in which the method differs from traditional elicitation methods. The first way is that text data is digital from start to finish. So you, that means that you don't have to digitize any non-digital data. Also, the recording sessions are structured, and they're structured in such a way that the automatic processing later on is possible. Then finally, the uh, special software is utilized for the automated processing of that structured data. So these three, three things together, they make this method uh, the most efficient method for processing elicited data. So now looking at the method itself, there are four stages. The first stage is the preparation stage. This is before you even meet with the speaker as you're preparing your session. The second stage is the elicitation stage. 
during this stage, you're working with the speaker to uh, collect data and to make transcriptions and metadata. The third stage is the recording stage, when you make a structured recording that is designed specifically for automated processing. And then the fourth stage is the data processing itself. So now we'll look at each of these stages in a little bit more detail. So during the preparation stage, the first thing you want to do is you want to prepare your files for your session. So you want to make a session folder and you want to make an elicitation spreadsheet of some kind to put into that folder. Then you want to plan your session. You want to think about what kind of data you want to collect and who you might be working with to collect that data. And this example for this presentation, um, in this session, I was trying to collect items that had been previously recorded in a dictionary uh, by Franz Rotland. So here you can see there's an English Swahili Isumjig de Toga dictionary. And for this session, I was pulling out some items from that dictionary. So to prepare for my session, I produced a spreadsheet like the one you can see here. So in this spreadsheet, I've got some basic metadata like the speaker that I'm going to be working with. Uh, my name is the researcher, uh, the basic uh, topic of the session, uh, as well as the date. And then I've already uh, digitized some of the uh, English translations and Swahili translations, and then I've left room uh, in these two columns for transcriptions and extra notes. All right, now that we've prepared for the session, we can start to do the actual elicitation. So we'll sit down with the speaker and start to fill out this elicitation spreadsheet. So you can see here that uh, I filled out a number of transcriptions and then I took some notes. Uh, here, ATR refers to uh, advanced tongue root. So I was wondering, is the uh, particular item, is it plus ATR or minus ATR? Then for this particular item, I was wondering if Rotland's original entry uh, was different because it was inflected, whereas I was getting an uninflected form. And then uh, in this, for this next item, I noted that uh, there wasn't actually a good word that corresponded to these English and Swahili translations, so I did not record a transcription. And then finally, I just noted uh, for this item in row 23 that the speaker was not that certain about the item. Okay, I want to point out that you can also enrich this spreadsheet uh, in a number of different ways. You can uh, draw circles around data, you can do different kinds of text formatting like different colors or bolding or italics. You can also insert shapes like this arrow that you see here and then also images if you want to uh, refer to any images, especially if you're using some sort of uh, reference image for your elicitation. Then you can uh, include a digital version of that in this spreadsheet. Okay, after you're done eliciting all of these items and you've got all of your transcriptions, then you want to start to prepare for the recording stage. Now to do that, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to use your elicitation page as a foundation to create a recording page. The recording page just has all of the text data that you want uh, to be processed later on. So that's going to include your English translations, uh, in this case Swahili translations, uh, your transcriptions, whether they're IPA or orthographic, and then if you want to include your notes, then those as well. Uh, you're not going to include any of the graphics uh, or the images or any of the special uh, text formatting. So now you want to ask the speaker to practice repeating some of these items multiple times um, and pausing between those, uh, those groups of repetitions um, to prepare them for this uh, recording stage. So ideally what you will have them do is um, you will prompt them with a translation of some kind and then they will produce the elicited item um, multiple times, either in isolation or in some kind of container phrase. And if you're using a headset microphone, then hopefully the uh, amplitude of the speech of the speaker will be significantly greater than the amplitude of your speech. And that will help later on with the automated processing. So you can see here, this is a picture of a structured elicitation session, um, or structured recording uh, with repetitions. So this is um, the, the ideal uh, kind of recording that you will make through this method. 
All right, after you're done with that recording, the first thing you should do is back up all of your data. So make sure that you make multiple copies of multiple hard drives. Uh, you can also back it up to, um, to cloud storage, for example. Uh, just back it up as many times as you can. Now we're going to begin the processing stage. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to use PROT, which is free computer software for the analysis of speech. Uh, using prompt, you're going to open your recording, and then you're going to use uh, this function called annotate to text grid silences to automatically segment the data. So you can see here we've got the audio recording, and then we now have segments on the bottom. These segments don't have any particular text in them here. They just have three asterisks in them because that's uh, what the data merger script uses to recognize segments. Um, and later on, what we'll do is actually integrate our text with this audio. But for right now, we just have the segments. The way that Prot does this is it's looking for audio of a certain amplitude, and then it's also looking for durations of, uh, of silence, and then also sounding durations. So how long is the period of sound, and how long is the period of silence? And using those settings, it can then pick out uh, when the speaker is producing an elicited item and when the speaker is not producing an elicited item. And that allows us to do this automatic segmentation. Okay, the next step of the processing is we're going to use the data merger program to create these time aligned annotations. So we're going to put the data merger program, which might be a Python script, or if you're using Windows, it might be an executable file. Put that in the same folder as the files that you want to process. Then you run that program, and it will uh, output three formats. It will output a EAF file for Elon, it will output a text script file for Prot, and it will output a tab delimited file. So here we see one of those outputs. This is the uh, text grid file, which has segmented audio, but now with the text added to it. So now you can uh, open this up in Prot and you can search for your data within this file. The uh, second format is outputted by the data merger program. This is tab delimited text. So here I've opened up a selection of the tab delimited text in a spreadsheet application. And you can see that it includes a unique reference ID, has the English translation, so a Healy translation, the transcription, and then also the notes, and then the start time and end time. So again, this is actually exactly the same data as in this uh, prop text grid file, but it is just in tab delimited text. So it's uh, machine readable, it's easily accessible if someone wants to run a script on it. Okay, then the final output is a EAF file which is used by Elon. And Elon is especially uh, useful if you want to create a corpus of your data. So if you use this method, then as soon as you're done processing your data, you can add it to a corpus together with all of your other data and you can search across all of that data. And a cool thing about Elon is you can actually uh, integrate it with Prot so you can search for some data and then select the audio and open that audio directly in Prot. So it's very fast and very efficient. Okay, that's the end of the method. So now, if you've done this method, you've successfully created accessible and citable data. Uh, and this data is also ready for archiving. So here I have an example citation from a publication, uh, which has one of the words from this recording that we just saw, and it has a persistent identifier, and then also has the unique reference ID that is internal to that document. Okay, so just to summarize again, how does this method work? How does this make it uh, make processing so fast? The first thing again is that the text data is digital from start to finish. So you're not writing in a physical notebook, you're typing into a spreadsheet. Uh, the recording sessions are also structured in such a way that makes automated processing possible. So that means that you don't have to manually segment your audio. And then finally, uh, we're using software to automatically uh, segment the audio data and then combine the text data with the audio data. So the digital notebook is a good solution for basically anyone who plans to collect elicited data. That could be a small amount of data or a big amount of data. 
And the reasons are that it gives you instant access, which means there's no more manual processing, which will save you lots of time. It's also scalable, which means uh, um, small data sets can be used with the method and also really big data sets can be used with the method. And then also the output data is archive ready and citable. So that means improved accessibility and by better scientific practices. If you want to learn more about this method, uh, there's a, a wiki which you can access at this URL here. There's also a video demonstration of the processing stage. It's available on YouTube. And then also you can download the data merger program at this third URL on the screen. All right, thank you for listening. I want to add that this work is supported by the Indigenous Languages Documentation Program, the University of Oregon Global Studies Institute, and the uh, Firebird Foundation. All right, thank you for listening. If you have any questions, also feel free to contact me at my email, which is uh, visible on the uh, Digital Notebook Method Wiki. It is rgriscom at gmail.com.